In today's video, I'm going to show you why the composite restorations turn yellow and how to prevent the same. Composites have always been our daily part of our clinical dentistry. Uh, we spend a lot many hours in doing a composite restoration and uh, we spend ample amount of time developing the anatomy, developing the contacts, uh, doing a proper finishing etc. But eventually when we call the patient for a follow up later, uh, we realize that the composite has now turned yellowish. Well, uh, there is a simple explanation and there is a science behind this as to why the composite turns yellow. So let's jump in into our presentation and, let, and uh, let's see what does the chemistry of the composite restoration has to do with the composite turning yellow. Any dental composite contains the monomer matrix that is the bis GMA, bis CMA, tech DMA and UDMA. Now this monomer to polymer conversion has to happen for the composites to turn hard. Now, uh, as we all know, today's uh, composites are light cured composites. So, uh, the major component of any composite material in today is the light activator that is the camphoroquinone or maybe other tertiary amines. Now, what really happens here is that whenever we have a, a class 1 cavity or whether it is a class 2 cavity or whether it is a class 5 uh, cavity, the outer surface of any composite material that is the last increment that we are curing uh, in uh, any composite material is in contact with air. Now this topmost layer that is maybe 9 to 30 microns of this topmost layer which is in contact with the air has the ability to not get cured completely. Now this layer, uh, this a tiny layer of 9 to 30 microns which is there on the outer surface of the last increment of your composite is nothing but it is called as the oxygen inhibition layer. Now this oxygen inhibition layer is nothing but an uncured monomer. So it is not some special uh, chemistry that is getting formed when the composite is getting light cured but it is nothing but the uncured monomer or the basic monomer that is there in the composite material. Now this formation of oxygen inhibition layer is, uh, is present with each and every type of composite material. So whether it is a nano hybrid, whether, whether it is a microfill, whether it is a fiber reinforced composite, whether it is a flowable, whether, whether it is a, uh, a chemical cure, whether it is a light cure, irrespective of anything, this oxygen inhibition layer is going to get formed. Now this oxygen inhibition layer is nothing but a resin rich uncured layer. Now this is a major reason why the composites turn yellowish. And the major problem that happens with this oxygen inhibition layer is that if it is not removed, we do not get a hard surface to polish. We'll see uh, in detail regarding this in the next few slides. So now there is a time to ask a real question and should I be removing it or whether I should be keeping it? In case if I have to remove it, then what are the methods by which I can tackle it? So let's see in detail regarding this chemistry of the oxygen inhibition layer. Now this oxygen inhibition layer is not only limited to composites but it is also present with the adhesive because adhesives are nothing but they have the similar uh, chemistry like our composites. Therefore uh, adhesives also have a possibility of formation of an oxygen inhibition layer. Now removal of the oxygen inhibition layer that is formed with the adhesive is not recommended because there is a decrease in bond strength. Yes, so there is a possibility that uh, the composites that you place after removal of the oxygen inhibition layer with the, with the adhesive might get debond. Therefore, in case of adhesives, do not touch the oxygen inhibition layer, let it be as it is. So coming on to composites. Now there is ample amount of literature that is shown that there is no change in the bond strength when we are removing an oxygen inhibition layer with 
composites. Now let's take an example here. As you can see in this case, there is a small void that has been formed once the composite restoration has been done. Now the oxygen inhibition layer in this case is already been removed earlier and I just need to remove that or I, I just need to tackle that small void. So there is no oxygen in inhibition layer here. Therefore, the new composite that I'm going to place is definitely going to have good amount of strength or I would say similar strength as as it is to the old composite that has been placed. Now, whenever we have completed any composite restoration, uh, the, the entire surface looks very shiny. Well, this is a treacherous luster. This is a false shiny layer and this is nothing but the oxygen inhibition layer. Now, in case if we are retaining this oxygen inhibition layer, then there is going to be reduce in surface hardness. There is going to be decrease in wear resistance and there is going to be decrease in marginal adaptation. Therefore, what we intend to have in our composite restoration before we start the finishing and polishing protocol is to have this dull surface. Unless and until I see this dull surface, we are not going to initiate our finishing and polishing protocol. Therefore, our initial question, so sh should I be removing it? Well, yes, you should definitely be removing the oxygen inhibition layer. Now coming to the second question is, when should I be removing the oxygen inhibition layer? Well, in case if you are doing a composite restoration with injection molding, now in injection molding, we are always excessive or I would say over building the, uh, the cavity of the uh, tooth. Therefore, this 9 to 30 microns of oxygen inhibition layer that has been formed after curing of the composite irrespective is going to get eliminated. So it practically does not matter when we are doing an injection molding. However, there are, there are cases where we still do layering of the tooth in which we are doing cuspal buildup. Now there is a possibility that we won't have any high point or any excessive composite on any of the surface. Therefore, there is a possibility that if this oxygen inhibition layer is not removed, then it might retain behind and it might turn the composite surface or the entire composite yellowish. Therefore, it is recommended that whenever we have done uh, any kind of layering technique, we remove this oxygen inhibition layer. Now, removal of this oxygen inhibition layer or maybe tackling this oxygen inhibition layer can be done by two methods. First is by using a glycerin gel and second is by scrubbing with pumice. Now, uh, in case of glycerin gel, once we have cured the last increment of our composite restoration, then we just place a transparent glycerin gel over that composite surface and we again cure one last time. In the second method uh, where we uh, be using pumice, we just scrub the entire surface of the composite restoration with pumice and water and maybe you can use your perio brush for the same and this will take care of uh, the oxygen inhibition layer that has been formed on the surface of the composite. Well, this oxygen inhibition layer is not only limited to our light cure composite but they, they can also form in our chemical cure composites. So the thing that I'm mentioning here is our chair side temporaries. Yes, these chair side temporaries, they also have the ability to turn yellowish if the oxygen inhibition layer is, has not been removed. So the manufacturers recommend that we use an alcohol scrub uh, to remove the oxygen inhibition layer from these temporaries so that they don't turn yellowish because these chair side temporaries, we would be keeping them for uh, uh, some period of time. Apart from that, whenever we are using uh, the our light cured uh, resin cements or maybe if you are using your warm flowable composite or maybe it is a packable composite to lute your indirect restorations, then uh, the junction between the indirect restoration and the tooth, there is a possibility that a thin layer of resin cement might be exposed to the oral environment. Therefore, it is necessary that we remove the the, this oxygen inhibition layer from this tiny layer also. So maybe you can use glycerin or maybe you can use pumice. Well, I hope you like this presentation. Please do subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. 
not only that please feel free to share this video with your colleagues and your friends and please feel free to comment below if you have any doubt regarding the same or maybe if you have experienced uh, this kind of situation in your clinical practice see you again with the next video